So in this video today, we are going to be discussing seven different ways to make $1,000 in a very short period of time. And this is going to be outside of going out there and getting a job, which is of course the easiest way to go out there and make $1,000. So whatever the situation may be, maybe you're in a pinch and you're looking to raise some money quick, or you have a goal in mind that you're looking to save some money for, these are a couple of different strategies that you may want to follow that could allow you to make $1,000 in a short period of time. So that being said, guys, let's get into it. Here are seven different ways that you can raise some quick cash and potentially make $1,000. So number one on my list here is simply listing your spare room or extra space that you have on Airbnb. Now there's a big misconception out there that you have to have an entire house or an entire apartment in order to list that space on Airbnb. And I'm here to tell you guys that that is simply not true. I actually tested out this money-making strategy over the summer. I took my spare bedroom and I listed it on Airbnb as a private room for about a one month period. And I actually made about $1,000 in the process, a little over $1,000. And I did a whole video outlining and documenting my experience with that, which I will link up down in the description below. But I was personally very surprised just how much money that you could make by simply listing a spare room on Airbnb for people who are looking to visit the area or take a break while they are traveling. So you do not need to have a completely private space to host guests on Airbnb. If you're comfortable with having other people in your space and in your home with you, uh, it is a really easy way to make some extra side income. And if you guys are curious about the earnings potential for Airbnb, I'm gonna go ahead and link up to a earnings calculator down in the description below. All you have to do is enter some basic information like your location, the size of the place that you're going to be listing, how many guests you would allow, and it will give you an idea based on other Airbnb listings in your area, just how much money you could potentially make by listing your space on Airbnb. Now for full transparency, I am affiliated with Airbnb, so I do earn a commission if you do decide to use my link and sign up as an Airbnb host. All right, now idea number two for making some quick cash is the old faithful, the tried and tested, having a garage sale. Now I know this may not be the most interesting way to go out there and make money, but this will actually serve two different purposes at once. Number one, you can clean out your basement or clean out your garage and it's going to reduce a lot of the stress in your life. And number two, you can actually make a decent amount of money. Now personally, this is not a strategy I've ever followed myself just because I don't really have a lot of stuff and I would consider myself to be more of a minimalist. But if you are somebody who has a lot of extra tools and electronics and video games sitting around and the weather in your area is nice, well, having a garage sale over a weekend could be an easy way to make some money. And if you do it right, there are many people that make you know anywhere from $500 to $1,000 or more from a garage sale. Now, if you're gonna actually have a garage sale, here's a couple of tips that I would recommend following to maximize your earnings potential. Number one is to actually reference the prices of things online as you are pricing your items because certain things have a lot of value and people may have just no idea what they're worth. When I was a kid, I used to go to garage sales all the time because I always found it was interesting how you could get really good deals on stuff. And I can remember at one point in time, I went to a garage sale and I bought an acoustic guitar in a case for $2. I don't know what this person was thinking. I literally bought it for two bucks. I brought it home, I took some photos, put it on Craigslist and sold it that night for 60 bucks took $2, turned it into 60. So don't be like that person, don't be listing a guitar for $2. Actually look up the value of these things when you are determining your pricing. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do for your garage sale is actually put up some signs for your garage sale and do this a couple of days before. Because what people often do is they'll drive around the area and they'll scout out where the garage sales are and then they're going to plan out 
you know, their garage sale trip over that weekend where they're going to hit multiple sales. So if you don't have your signs up or your ads up on Craigslist and the different classified ads a couple of days before, well, when people are doing their planning for their garage sale trip, they may miss your garage sale entirely. And then the final tip I have for you with your garage sale is to consider getting the square payment reader or some way of taking credit card payments or at the very least set yourself up with a Venmo account because we know that these days most people just do not have cash and you may have somebody who shows up to your garage sale looking to buy something and then they realize, you know what, I don't have enough cash on me. So you might be in a situation where you're stuck negotiating because they don't have enough cash to pay your asking price. Well, if you're able to take credit card payments or Venmo, all of a sudden that goes out the window and you're able to get a fair price for your items or avoid having somebody who shows up who just doesn't have any cash to make a purchase. All right, so idea number three is going to work a lot better for people who are currently living where it is cold out and it is not garage sale season, and that is simply to sell your unused items on eBay. Now, when I was a kid, this was always one of my strategies for making money. Uh, it would be early on in the summer, I was looking to raise some money, and so what I would do is I would go around my house, I would ask my mom and dad and my brother and sister, hey, do you have any stuff that you don't need or don't want that I could potentially sell on eBay? And I would collect a lot of my old uh, electronics and video games, and I would list these items on eBay, I would have my mom bring me to the post office, and that would be my way of raising some extra money for the summer. So again, this is going to kill two birds with one stone. You're going to clear out a lot of stuff and reduce stress in your life and potentially make some extra money. And even though it is going to be a more time consuming process to photograph your items, box them and ship them, you're going to get top dollar for these items on eBay. Now, another strategy that you can follow, which I kind of alluded to earlier on, is by going to garage sales and buying items and then reselling them on eBay. And this is a strategy known as reselling. And this is a way that a lot of people are making some extra side income, is just simply buying stuff from garage sales or buying stuff from thrift shops and then simply reselling those items on eBay for their full market value. Because oftentimes, people have no idea what stuff is worth, they're gonna throw a random price on it, and if you're able to get a good deal, you can make a profit by selling it on eBay for the fair price. Now, idea number four for making some extra money is going to be good if you guys have some skills, especially on the computer, and that is going to be leveraging a service known as Fiverr. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about Fiverr. People think it's simply a place where you can sell a $5 gig, as the name would suggest. But there are countless people that are selling gigs for much more than just $5. You may have to start off at that lower price to get started and get some feedback and reviews from customers. But once you get the ball rolling, once you have some reviews, you can charge significantly more than $5 per gig. In fact, in the past, I've paid even as much as $100 for gigs on Fiverr based on what I was looking for. So just how much money can you make on Fiverr? Well, according to this article I found from Forbes, there are countless people out there making over $100,000 per year just by doing gigs on Fiverr. Like this Houston woman making $38,000 to $48,000 per month doing resume writing, or this copywriter from Missouri making $10,000 to $15,000 per month on Fiverr. Now the thing is, as I'm sure you know, it's not going to happen overnight, and these people that are making six-figure income on Fiverr have been doing it for years. But if your goal is simply to make $1,000, it's entirely possible to do so on Fiverr or other freelance websites out there. All right, so idea number five for making some quick cash is looking for some under the table employment on Craigslist, also known as doing odd jobs. Now, I just wanna preface this by telling you guys, you need to be careful with this, and I'm certainly not recommending that you go out there and show up at someone's house for an odd job. You're gonna to wanna to do your due diligence and talk to the person on the phone, and obviously consider whether or not you need any type of insurance if you're doing any work at people's property. But if you are looking for some quick and easy employment, uh, for example, let's say cleaning up someone's yard or helping them organize their garage, you may find odd jobs like this on Craigslist. Uh, and this is going to be, in most cases, under a section called general labor.
So I actually at one point was exploring this section of Craigslist when I was potentially going to be getting laid off. Um, I had a temporary job that was going to lead to full-time employment, uh, but basically they didn't have a job for me at that point in time. And I was pretty sure I was going to be getting laid off at the end of the week. So I was looking for some ways to make some money because I was gonna be out of a job. I went to the uh, general labor section of Craigslist and I got talking to a woman who was going to pay me $10 an hour under the table to help her organize her basement. Uh, so I was literally ready to go do that with her the following weekend. Uh, the good news is I didn't end up getting laid off. I was able to cancel that and not have to go do that odd job. Um, so I wouldn't say it's the best way to make money, but there are people who are looking for odd jobs here and there that they may be posting on Craigslist. Now again, just be careful, use common sense guys, be safe if you follow this strategy, and also be careful because there's a lot of scams out there where people are gonna be asking you to send emails out or do some kind of network marketing or multi-level marketing. So make sure that you don't get involved in a scam, but there may be people looking for some basic help and offering some under the table cash employment that you can find on sites like Craigslist. All right, so idea number six for making $1,000 quick was my original side hustle when I was a kid, and that was starting my own little lawn mowing business. And to be honest with you guys, this is one of the easiest ways to start making money as a kid, assuming that you have you know, the equipment. Now, in my case, my dad was actually really supportive of this little venture that I had. He let me use our household lawnmower, and he even offered to pay for my gas, which was awesome. So any amount of money that I made from my lawn mowing business was 100% profit. So I was 14 years old at the time. I went around my neighborhood with flyers, and I was able to get two customers for my lawn mowing business over the summer, which allowed me to earn 40 bucks per week. Now that was actually 10 years ago, so I'm sure now you could charge anywhere from $40 to $50 per lawn uh, to actually do lawn care service for your customers. So it's not unheard of to be able to make $50 to $100, maybe $200 per week with a small little lawn mowing business as a kid or as a teenager. And then on top of this, if you want to make additional money in the fall or in the winter, you could simply offer, you know, leaf raking or yard cleanup in the fall and then snow removal in the winter. So if you're somewhere where we have seasons changing just like where I live, well, you can take advantage of that and offer all of those different yard care services. Uh, and oftentimes the same customers who want lawn care are also going to be looking for someone to take care of the leaves and then take care of that snow removal as well. And then number seven, the final method I have here is driving for Uber or potentially driving for Lyft. They're basically like the same thing. Uh, I don't know if one allows you to earn more money than the other, but most people end up having both apps on their phone. But these ride sharing services have offered a really interesting opportunity for people, which basically allows you to make extra side income whenever you're looking to work. So if you wanna work these certain hours, you can. And then if you don't wanna work during these other hours, you simply turn off the apps and you don't have to work. Now, the one thing is you would obviously want to work at times when there is surge pricing to maximize your income, but it is a way to make some extra side income. And there are literally millions of Uber drivers out there that are making extra money by simply offering rides to people through the app. So just how much money can you make with Uber or Lyft? Well, it's going to depend heavily on the area where you live, as well as whether or not you're getting a lot of surge pricing. So as I'm sure you can imagine, you know, an Uber or Lyft driver in, you know, Las Vegas, for example, probably does better than somebody who lives in the middle of nowhere. So CNBC actually did an interview with a Uber driver who had been doing this for over five years in Minnesota. And he said that he drives about 30 hours per week and makes about $500 in the process. So is this really the best way to make money? Money, probably not because after you consider your fuel costs and wear and tear on your vehicle you're probably not making you know much above minimum wage but the beauty of this is it's not a job you can work it when you want and you can certainly make a thousand dollars you know driving for these different ride-sharing services 
But anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. Those are seven different ways to make a thousand dollars quick. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Have you tried any of these ideas yourself or do you have plans to try them after this video? I would love to hear what you guys think. If you're new to this channel and you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to be notified of any future uploads and I hope to see you in the next one.